is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick. In me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. Hallelujah. That is so strong. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? Surprisingly enough, the verse that all Christians like to use when talking about apologetics, this verse right here. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. But most of the time we stop right there. When I got to this part, yet do it with gentleness and respect, I realized that I and plenty of other people, especially on this app, when it comes to defending our faith, we don't honor this part of the verse. We're downright jerks. And... I need God to have mercy on me and to help me be more patient and kind with people. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? Oh, you talking about with the quickness? <laughs> Let me read it for you. Matthew 12, 36. Moreover, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. Moreover, I tell you this. On the day of judgment, people will have to give account for every careless word they have spoken. For by your own words, you will be acquitted. And by your own words, you will be condemned. Hello, you telling me by my own words, I can be acquitted or condemned? Okay, <laughs> that shut me up real quick. I ain't trying to be condemned, baby. Mm -mm. What about you? You go next. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? Okay, so I don't remember the specific name of the message that I was watching. All I know is that it was by my favorite communicator, T.D. Jakes. And he ends up speaking on Moses and Aaron. Uh, in Numbers chapter 20, because they were leading the Israelites at the time. But the Israelites were very thirsty, and so they started to complain to Moses and Aaron, saying, hey, we need water, yada, yada, yada. So Moses and Aaron, they get before God, and God says, hey, you're going to find a rock, and you're going to speak to that rock and tell it to bring out water, and the thirst of the Israelites will be quenched. Well, Moses, he gets before the rock, and instead of speaking to it like God asked him to, he strikes it twice with his staff. And the thing is, water still comes out of the rock abundantly, to quench the thirst of the Israelites. And then T.D. Jake says something that I will never forget. He said, just because God uses you doesn't mean he's always pleased with you. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? I used to be somebody that would incorporate sarcastic jokes, inappropriate talk, and dark humor in my daily life. It was my language. I didn't think anything wrong of it because I wasn't acting out on any of the things that I joked about. And I wasn't cussing until the day I read Ephesians 5, 4, which says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. And right then and there, I got convicted by the Holy Spirit and knew that if I wanted to grow closer to Christ, I would have to put foolish and filthy talk to the side and crucify that to the cross and um, be renewed by the Holy Spirit completely. You know, because filthiness and foolishness was literally the core of my humor. So yeah, that was one of the things that shut me up real quick. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? You already knew I had to hop on this. Let's talk about Revelation chapter 3, 15 through 16. And it reads, I know all the things that you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And to be honest, I really love that. It scared me at first, but let me tell you why I love it so much. A lot of us Christians think that you have time, that I will get to God eventually, that I will get a relationship with God tomorrow, that I will pray tomorrow, that I will just try harder tomorrow or next week or in a month. But what you don't realize is you are not promised yet another day. That tonight, if you rest your eyes, that could be the last time that you take your last breath. That we all face judgment day and you can't go back and change time on judgment day. So get out of this comfortable state that you are in and start living for God. 
What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? I'll go first. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses two, starting in verses two, starting in verse one, actually. Um, it's the famous verse. He's going to come back like a thief in the night. Jesus is going to come back like a thief in the night. Um, came across a video last night. That's all. That's what I've heard all my life. All my life growing up. Came across a video last night. Um, and she said, you know, just keep reading, basically. That's not what she said, but basically that's what she said. Just keep reading. So I did. I went to the verse and I read. And um, maybe me and this sister are leaning to our own understanding. And if we are, please correct us. Please correct us. Um, but if you keep reading, that's only for the non-believers. It's only for the non-believers. If you are a cross Christ follower, he's not going to come back like a thief in the night. It's only for the non-believers. It's only for the non-believers. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? All right, but listen, all right. I love my naps. I, any opportunity that I will get to take a nap, best believe I am taking it no matter how busy I am. But as I've been meditating on the word and just, yeah, just studying it, I came across this scripture that really, 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 really came for my neck, all right? So it says, it's in Proverbs, it's Proverbs chapter six, verse nine, and it says, but you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Let me just tell you something. Poverty is not my portion. God did not give me this life to be dwelling in poverty for free. So, where you are, wake up. Wake up. Get up. <laughs> what is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? Okay, so me, I used to fall into sin like a lot. Like, obviously, we're humans, so we may fall into sin like now and whatnot, whatnot. But no, I used to fall into sin knowing that, oh yeah, God is forgiven. He just, I'm gonna just go back and repent. Like, I'm gonna just smoke this blunt. And then two days later, I'm gonna repent because he's so forgiven. Until, until. Hebrews 10 verse 26, it basically says, if you willfully sin, like if you're willfully, so you know you're sinning, the sacrifice that was made on the cross will no longer, if it's no longer going to have a little thing on you. So if you're willfully sinning, thinking, okay, cool, you know, God, he's going to forgive me. He's ever, no, you're willfully doing it now. Yes, you may be human, you're around the flesh, you know, you're doing it because you know you're going to go back and ask for forgiveness. I hope this helped you. But remember, Hebrews 10 verse 26. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? I'll go first. So some of the strongest men in my life have been my father and my grandfathers. They all were farmers, hard workers, and just knew what toughness was. I have never seen a tear drop from their eyes. But let me tell you something. If you are a guy that holds in your emotions and tries to act tough, that doesn't make you a manly man. The toughest man to ever walk this earth is Jesus Christ. And I don't think it's a coincidence that in John 11:35, the shortest verse of the Bible, it says, Jesus wept. He cried. See, a tough guy is not someone that bottles up their emotion and never shows vulnerability. A tough guy is someone that will die for what they love. So give it to him and let it out. What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. When Jesus would talk to the Pharisees when he was here for 33 years, notice how he always exposed their hearts. We could be doing all the gifts of the Father and the will of the Father, but if our heart isn't right, if we're still dabbling in sin while going to church on the next Sunday, if we're still dabbling in sin, trying to cast out devils and heal the sick, God's not going to acknowledge that. We always got to make sure our heart is right before we do anything that has to do with God. Because I ain't trying to get kicked out of heaven, you feel me? What is something that you read in the Bible that shut you up real quick? First Peter 5, 14. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Shut me up because my lips were together.